Hello. I've learned new things about Season 1 of the Monument Mythos. Thanks to you all letting me know in the comments. Like things about Alcatraz attack, about the fact that, you know, it's thought that the prison is actually a singular cell that is able to copy itself. Similar to mitosis of being able to copy oneself and just create almost a freaking army. And the fact that Alex Kansas, who has now been rebranded as Mr. Manticore, is now someone who is actually exposing the secrets that were once hidden from the world. And my god, the comments just made me want to watch more, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be watching Dean Democracy, Air Force One Angel, and Lincoln Looker for the next three episodes. And Dean Democracy looks like it's going to be a bit of a long one. I'm here for it. I think it's going to be great. Kind of curious what they're going to do with Air Force One. And I have no I I don't... Is the Lincoln Looker... Or is that Lincoln in the chair? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, well, let's just go ahead and jump right into this because there's so much I want to dive in because I'm going to have a lot more questions that I really hope you're all going to help answer in the comments. A captions on. There we go. Dean Democracy, a look back at America's 37th president. During a program of ABC Evening News, anchor Peter Jennings told viewers to look forward to next week for a special broadcast of national significance. Jennings would continue to remind viewers of the special broadcast over the next seven nights, even referring to it at one point as the most unprecedented announcement in recent history. Mm. A week after its first mention, Jennings reminded viewers of the special broadcast one last time, asking them to pay attention later that night for an exclusive look at the greatest gift to the American people. Just Due to the anticipation really hyping over people week, up. over 60 million Americans tuned into ABC, waiting for the evening news to end and for the special broadcast to begin. There were countless theories as to what would occur, from the announcement of alien life to the declaration of an all-out nuclear war, Speculation was brewing intensely. Once the evening news program ended, a black screen with a 10 second countdown commenced with the title Dean Democracy. Some viewers, so terrified of the threat of nuclear war, mm. reportedly experienced nervous breakdowns and ran down the street declaring that Dean Democracy was the code name for an all out nuclear holocaust. Yet once the countdown ended, all fears were soon replaced with tears of joy and an excitement not seen since the end of World War II. What are we waiting for? Let's bring them back home. In the so second confused. following what? James Dean's presidential announcement, oh, of okay. of neighborhoods erupted into celebration. Although other candidates had promised to end the Vietnam War, none had so accurately expressed the same anger that they had felt, which Dean had perfectly conveyed in a 15 second broadcast. Due to popular demand, the ABC evening news was canceled the next night replaced by a 30-minute loop of James Dean's presidential announcement. It's like subliminal the messaging. was watched again by over 38 million Americans, and the parties continued for the rest of that's, the week. That's a heavy subliminal messaging that's not so subliminal anymore. Due to repeated assassination attempts on Robert Kennedy, the Democratic Party presidential debates were canceled for the 1968 election season. However, this proved to be no issue for Dean, as polls indicated that he was in the lead for the entirety of 1967 and 1968, despite an alternate having universe? more public appearances and rallies than any other candidate. The strength of his campaign relied on the powerful advertisements he directed that would air every Friday evening on ABC. The series of programs would be considered by many as another weekly TV series and went on to become the highest rated TV show on television after the conclusion of Star Trek in 1967. I'm Although waiting for the conspiracy. was eventually scheduled two weeks before the election, James Dean instead invited opponent Richard Nixon to a track to race cars on the same night. Although reluctant at first, Nixon eventually agreed and went to spend the entire day with Dean, reportedly even telling the actor, to hell with it. I'm voting for you. You're already mm. a better president than I'll ever be. This statement, although only a rumor, would spread like wildfire in tabloids and permanently curbed Nixon's chance for victory. 
On the morning of November 1, 1968, four days before Election Day, anti-Dean groups hijacked radio channels and told civilians they were fed up with James Dean and that television was ruining American youth. After the broadcast, the groups went on to cut hundreds of power lines in the Southeast, effectively preventing any of Dean's presidential ads from reaching any household below Tennessee. Dean quickly heard of the incident, and despite the risk of an assassination, flew down to the South and quickly went to work with local mm. electricians to repair the broken power lines. James Dean would be met with a supportive crowd, primarily younger voters who were eager to see a younger face back in the White House. Elderly white conservatives, often the parents of the younger supporters, remained in their houses and occasionally peered through their window blinds to catch a glimpse of the handsome candidate. Although it wasn't known to Dean at the time, Hate groups in the South had perpetuated the idea that he was Satan in disguise, and cited his good looks and his love for jazz as... I mean, they started people. doing that with a lot of things, perpetuating that Satan was in a lot of stuff. James Dean's America, 1969 AD. So it's like this group was just seeing subliminal stuff and stuff that was really just pushing on people, and they were created an advert James against him. Dean is no man. Produced by the Anti Dean Association. Dude, where is this Elderly a conspiracy white now? In the Southeast would be the only demographic unfazed by his campaign. Yet Dean continued to travel from state to state, repairing power lines for four days straight until the very morning of the election. On November 5th, 1968, James Dean received 75% of the popular vote with 395 electoral votes. Nixon congratulated Dean in a phone call the following morning. But Dean refused to acknowledge the win and instead asked to race cars again at the track. I don't I don't know if this is an alternate On universe 20th, where there's like all this is happening. James Dean held his inaugural address at the official Capitol Raceway. If, but Although it feels like it feels heavily speeches that were typically around 20 minutes. Dean spoke for less than a minute. I have a speech. And it has the flotsam that you people expect to hear. But that's not fair. No, that's not fair at all. I'm here for all of you. It's only fair that you speak for yourselves. My words shouldn't be louder than yours. So I've brought many other guests to speak. They're just people like you and I. In the same time that many other presidents have spoken by themselves, America will speak. Thank you. He's a pre he, he's a man that's legit for the people. Dean James Dean is being put in many this. groups to the microphone, including civil rights activists and Native American families. Martin Luther King Jr. would also come forward to speak in his first appearance since an attempt on his life nine months prior. President Dean would conclude the inauguration with a brief bongo performance and went on to race Richard Nixon at the track. In subsequent presidential inaugurations, those who disagreed with the elected president would instead celebrate Dean Democracy Day and protested by watching Dean's unique take on the address in place of the actual one. This is definitely alternate universe type in stuff right now. In a televised right address, President Dean planned to inform Americans of his first 90 days in office. However, six seconds into the broadcast, the audio cut out and remained absent for the remainder of the speech. Although anti-Dean groups claimed responsibility and took pride in the sabotage, many civilians claimed that it benefited the president. The silent broadcast highlighted President Dean's sincere facial expressions and lively disposition, as opposed to the stern and personalities of prior administrations. Viewers were proud to see a man in his prime at the most important position in the country. What's happening? Ironically, President Dean's popularity grew after the technical difficulty, and film director Stanley Kubrick went on to call the broadcast the greatest silent film ever made. James Dean's got a hold on the in this universe, man. He's got a hold on the people. Good lord. Alex Kasanis. Is that the end of it? Is there any, like... Okay, so what is the... Is this just an alternate universe that this is just captured of, like, this is, like, the perfect president? One that's for the people, one that's just loved by almost everyone? What is it exactly about this that is just 
because to me there's some kind of unsettling. I don't know what it is, but my gut is just a little unsettled by this because it felt like just this heavy subliminal that was no longer subliminal build up towards this advert for James Dean to then just the constant playing of his presidential announcement or whatever. It's just, oh my gosh, there's, I'm really trying to unpack all this. I need someone to explain this to me because I know that there's probably something behind this, but I'm not sure what it is. And that's what's really messing with me. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm reading into it too much or if there is legit something there. And it's messing with my mind and I don't like it. But we're going to go ahead and watch Air Force Angel. Air Force One Angel, I should say. Air Force One Angel. What's going to happen with the historic plane that has just been known to take on many presidents? On August 17, 2003, Air Force One made an unannounced trip across the continental of the United States. Many civilians claim to have seen the aircraft drop packages on various na national monuments. Was the, was the Statue of Liberty one of them? If so, I have many questions. But I also think I have many answers to it. Like, this plane, Air Force One, is a monument in of itself because of the history with it. Because it's, it's just so iconic. It's the presidential plane. So it's only natural that this would show up. But what are the packages? Is it a thing of, like, we're ready. We're taking them out. We're taking out the country. What's happening to America? It's just completely being erased. Is this connected with the Liberty Lurker, or is this connected with Alcatraz Island? Because America right now is just being taken out. Now, big question, is there anybody on the plane? I don't think there's a single person on there. What was that? What is that? White House officials later disclosed that the unusual flight of Air Force One was unauthorized and unmanned. That does not look like unmanned, an unmanned plane. The lone figure seen inside the plane, the, the Air Force One Angel, has yet to be identified by federal authorities. And I don't think it ever will. I don't think it's ever going to be identified. But what was it dropping? What were the packages? How big were the packages? Why was on the map parts of where the plane was going just starting to disappear with America? Why? Why was it all just starting to disappear? It just... Oh my gosh. I... I'm, I'm left reeling with this because there's something in there. And it, it's not just sh showing up on camera for no reason. And it's not just touching down with the packages on these monuments for no reason. There's... <sighs> I think it's like an activation thing. The plane's flying over, dropping something, activating maybe other angels with the monuments? I don't know. Kind of as in a, hey, we're about to start something. Be ready. That's my theory. I could be wrong. Please let me know in the comments what you think or what you know. Uh, now we're going to watch Lincoln Looker. All right. What have you got for us? Maya Arnoldson. You're a what now? One moment you're at home answering the door and the next you're stuck in some kind of suit. The smell was awful in there. The metal seat was so, so cold. 
The only thing you can do is look through two little holes. What are they dressed like? Some kind of mask. Lincoln? And whenever the sun shined near, I could see the inside of it. It was a familiar face. Every few nights, straws would be put through the holes, and someone would feed me some weird soup. Is this a cult After type thing? They found out that they had misidentified me, and I wasn't the correct Lincoln looker. Reagan apologized to me personally, and I was released with some monetary compensation. They don't care if I talk about it or not. No one would take me seriously. Reagan? Lincoln President Reagan? Was just too absurd. Are they mass drawn by Maya Arnoldson? Are they put in a suit and a mask to look like President Abraham Lincoln? What There's always the been someone that we dislike more than everyone else. Not usually famous or important, but they've done something that's affected us personally. Often you're the, you know, the only person who remembers this act. And I've been that bad, but memory hurts. Mm. Everyone experiences this, and the president is no exception. Except he can do something about it. Every president can choose one person to be a Lincoln looker. After the <coughs> alibi is fabricated, the person is abducted from their home, and they stay a Lincoln looker for as long as the president sits in office. <coughs> Nobody can question his decision, and there's no trial. Oh, that's just wrong. You might be surprised, but... It's that's nothing. kidnapping. It's been a tradition. Lincoln lookers have been around for a very long time. How long exactly? Due to rumors that Lincoln lookers were imprisoned behind presidential portraits, White House officials publicly removed and reinstalled the portraits to demonstrate that no space existed to hold Lincoln lookers. Oh, they're put behind the paintings, not... They're put behind the paintings, not statues or anything. I... Oh my gosh, I... am That now throw me for a loop. No, but that's fake. They... They, they fixed the wall. We're not available now. Please leave your name and phone number after the beep. <gasps> we will return your call. Hey, oh, wait. Venus. It's Howard. Oh, your voice is weird. I don't know what I just saw. I was at the top of the steps, reading the inscriptions and talking to visitors, when I started to hear a faint scratching sound. Oh, no. I didn't think much of it at first, but when I got close to the chair, I realized that the scratching was coming from inside the marble. It is inside the wall! So I went to a guard and asked whether she could do anything about animals that could be trapped in there. She told me not to worry about it, and that they'd take care of it once there were fewer visitors. Oh, you know. A few minutes passed, and the scratching became much louder. Oh, you know. I went back to the guard and asked what kind of animals usually got stuck in there, and she said, wild animals. The sound started to make visitors anxious. I remember one boy was pulling so hard at his mother's hand begging to leave. A blind girl with one of those canes went up to the chair and pressed her head against it to listen. Then she started crying. Her parents tried to pull her away, but she just began to hit the chair with her cane. The actual statue! That's when the guards asked everyone to go back down the steps. That's the actual statue, so it's behind the portraits. I crazy, but I felt compelled to help. So I went to the blind girl and joined her in hitting the marble. The guards tried to pin us down, but the scratching became too loud for even them. It sounded like someone was shaving down a chalkboard. Someone as an actual statue of Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. And a few more hits caused the crevice to expand all the way to the top of the chair. There was a sudden burst of air from the damage, and the head suddenly turned toward us. I was afraid it would fall, so I picked the girl up and went down a few steps. The head slowly rotated back into place, and when it started to be pushed upwards, I took out my camera. Do you have pictures? There's no wild animal. No, it was a person. Unfortunately. Someone that was actually kidnapped and taken. Howard Melrose recorded the following images. I was hoping it was going to be like a tape, but I guess not. No, nope, never mind. It is a tape. Oh, that's very similar. Very, very similar to the Liberty Lurker. That is, oh dear God. So they're putting people in there 
Except, I don't know why, but for the statue, I don't think that was a person. I think that was a monster. I love the fact that this series is just so filled with lore that this could be all within one universe. It could be all separate. Who knows? Just because of the Dean democracy, I think it's probably separate universes. I don't know. I could be wrong. I look forward to seeing what you have to say in the comments. But I also look forward to seeing more of this. But this is where we're going to end it. If you want to go ahead and watch these, maybe rewatch these because you've already seen it. Link in the description below. I recommend you go and check it out. Just don't spoil everything for me, please. I beg of you. If you enjoyed this, don't make sure to smash that like button. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought about this, what your theories are. If you have answers for me, I would love to hear them. If you have any videos like to see me watch and react to for in the future, please leave the links down below. I love to watch more and new scary stuff. I kind of found a channel that I had found before that was like, I was planning on watching that. So we got lots of stuff to watch and react to that I think is going to be a lot of fun. And if you're new around here and you've been enjoying to see in, and you want to stick around for the ride, why not hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified of my next video. I will see you all in the next one, though. Bye!